Hi guys, I've been reading here for seven days, one week. Which is a good result, I think. Seven days in a row. Yeah, just gonna continue doing this. And today's tour is called A Retrieved Reformation by O. Henry. A guard came to the prison shop, shoe shop where this safe cracker Jimmy Valentine was working hard and escorted him to a front of to the front office. There the there the warden gave Jimmy his pardon. He had served nearly ten months of a four year sentence. He expected to stay only about three months at the longest. Now Valentine said the warden you will go out in the in the morning. Make a man of yourself. You're not a bad fellow at heart. Stop cracking safes and life honest, honestly. Me? said Jimmy in surprise. Why? I never cracked a safe in my life. Oh no. Laughed the warden. Of course not. You're an innocent victim. At a quarter past seven, at on the next morning, Jimmy stood in the warden's office. The clerk, the, the clerk gave him a railroad ticket and a five-dollar bill. The warden gave him a cigar and shook, shook hands. Valentine, uh, eighty-seven sixty-two, was pardoned by governor. Governor. And now Mr. James Valentine walked out into the sunshine. Nice. Jimmy headed straight for a restaurant. There he tasted the first sweet joys of liberty in the shape of bo broiled chicken and a bottle of white wine, followed by a cigar. From there he went to the railroad station. Three hours later, he found himself in a little town near the state border. He went to the Mike's Dolan's Cafe and shook hands with Mike, who was alone behind the bar. Jimmy, my boy, said Mike. Feeling all right? Fine, said Jimmy. Have you got my key? He got his key and went upstairs unlocking the door of his room. Everything was just as he had left it. Jimmy dragged out a dust-covered suitcase. He opened this and glazed fondly at the finest set of bulgar stools in the east. It was a complete set made of steel and the latest designs in drills, punches, brace and beads, Jimmy's clamps and augers, 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 with two or three new tools invented by Jimmy himself, in which he took pride. In half an hour, Jimmy went downstairs. He was now well dressed and carried his clean suitcase in his hand. A week after the release of Valentine, uh, 9762, there was a safe bulgary in Richmond, Indiana. Eight hundred dollars. Two weeks after that, a part, part, a patented, a two weeks after that, a patented improved safe in Logan Sport was opened and safe of $1,500. Then a bank safe in Jefferson City, $5,000. The losses were remarkable. Ben Price himself noticed them. Ben Price remarked that 
Danny Jim Valentine's autograph. His resume resumed business. Just look, he has got only. He's got the only clamps that can do it. Yes, I guess Mr. Mr. Valentine was visit will visit the prison for sure. Ben Price knew Jimmy's habits. He had learned them while working on the Springfield case. Uh, one afternoon, Jim, Jimmy Valentine and his suitcase came to Elmore, a little town down in Arkansas. Jimmy, looking like a student, went towards the hotel. A young lady crossed the street, passed him at the corner and entered the door over which was a sign, the Ilmore Bank. Jimmy Valentine's looked into her eyes, forgot what, what he was and became another man. She lowered her eyes and colored it slightly. Jimmy caught a boy that was laughing near the bank. Isn't that young lady Polly Simpson asked Jimmy no said said the boy she is Annabelle Adams her father owned this, this bank Jimmy went to the planters hotel registered as Ralph D Spencer and took a room he said he had come to Elmore to took for a location to go to into business. How was the shoe business? How was the shoe business now in the town? He had thought of the shoe business. What the situation good for that? Yeah, there wasn't an an exclusive shoe store in the town. Businesses in all lines was fairly good. Mr. Spencer decided to spend a few days in the town. Mr. La Ralph Spencer, the fen phoenix that arose from Jimmy's Valentine's ashes, remained in Europe and prospered. He opened a shoe store. Socially, he was also, also a success and made many friends and he accomplished the wish of his heart. He met Miss Annabel Adams and became more and more captivate, captivated by her charms. At the end of a year, the situation of Mr. Ralph Spencer was this had won the respect of the community. His shoe store was flourishing and he and he and Annabelle were engaged to be married in two weeks. Mr. Adams, the typical typical country banker, approved of Spencer. One day Jimmy sat down in his room and wrote this letter, which is, which he mailed to the safe address of one of his old friends in St. Louis. Dear, dear old friend, I want you, I want you to be at Sullivan's Palace place in Little Rock next Wednesday night at nine o'clock. I want you to make a present of my kit of tools. I know you'll be glad to get them. Billy, I've quite the old business a year ago. I've got a nice store and I'm going to marry the finest girl on the earth two weeks from now. I wouldn't touch a dollar of another man's money now for a million. I'll tell you, Billy, she's an angel. She believes in me, and they wouldn't do anything wrong. 
please come to Silly's palace, for I must see you. I bring along the tools with me. I don't need them anymore. Your old friend Jimmy. On the mind, on the Monday, on the Monday night after Jimmy wrote his letter, Ben Price came into Elmore. He, fo he found out what he wanted to know. From the drug store across the street from Spencer's shoe store, he saw Ralph D. Spencer. Going to marry the banker's daughter, are you Jimmy? Said Ben to himself shortly. Well, I don't know. The next morning, Jimmy took breakfast at the Adamses. He was going to Little Rock the day to order his wedding suit and buy something nice for Annabelle. That would be the first time he had left town seat he came to Elmore. After breakfast, everybody went down, downtown to together. Mr. Adams, Annabelle, Jimmy and Annabelle's married sister with her two little girls age 5 and 9. They came by the hotel where Jimmy still loved lived and he ran up to his hotel room and brought on the suitcase. Then they went onto the bank. There stood Dolph Gibson who was going to drive him over drive him over to the railroad station. All entered the bank. Jimmy put his suitcase on the flo floor. Annabel, whose heart was full of happiness and youth, took the suitcase. Oh, Lar, oh, Ralph, how heavy, said Annabel. Is it full of gold bricks? The Almer Bank has just built a new world. Mr. Adams for, for, was very proud of it and forced everything, everyone to see it. The world was very small, but it had a new faint door. Little girls were very interested in the in the door. Ben Pry, Price entered the bank and learned on his elbow and leaned on his elbow. He said that he didn't want anything. He just he was just waiting for a man to know to, he knew. Suddenly there was a scream of two from the from the woman. <sighs> May the nine year old girl playing had not sh had shot her sister Agat Agata Agata. Agatha in the world wo world May the nine year old girl plane had sh shoot her sister out in the world the old bankers prank to the door the door can be opened he groaned it's shut forever I got his mother screaming again hysterically hush said Mr. Adams, raising his trembling hand. All be quiet for a moment, Agatha. He called as loudly as he could. Listen to me, my darling. Well, the mother, she will die of fright. Open the door or break the door. Can you man, can't you man do something? There's only one man who can open that door, said Mr. Adams in a shaky voice. But he's in a little rock. My God, Spencer. What shall we do? That children, she can't stand it long in there. There isn't en enough air. I got a smother was crying. Somebody suggested dynamite. Dynamite. Annabelle turned to Jimmy. Can't you do something, Ralph? Try, won't you? He looked at her with a smile. 
Jimmy threw the coat of his coat with that act Ralph dispenser went away and Jimmy Swanton to his place. Get to get away from the door, all of you, he commanded shortly. He opened his suitcase in a deep silence. The others watched him. He opened his suitcase in a deep, deep, deep silence. The others watched him as if under a spell. In 10 minutes, breaking his own burglar's record, he opened <laughs> breaking his burglar's record, he opened the door. That was almost collapsed. Jimmy Valentine put on his coat and walked towards the front door. At the door, a big man stood somewhat in his way. Well, Ben, said Jimmy, still with his strange smile. Well, let's go. And then Ben Price acted rather strangely. I guess you're mistaken, Mr. Spencer, he said. I don't believe I recognize you. Your bag is waiting for you, isn't it? And Ben Price turned, turned and walked down the street. Bag is waiting for you, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna check the words. Okay, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Subscribe. Bye. Thank you.